So for propagation, uh, what I want to do is kind of a layer by layer technique. So um, I'm going to keep track of a Z variable, which is going to be um, kind of the uh, index, uh, the third index in our cellular automaton. So the first index you can see is zero, right? So this is where we are resetting or laying out the first layer. And then I want to increase it and add layer on top of uh, these as well so that uh, we can keep track of the data in three dimensions. And let's go down and now we have to write an update method. Um, so for update, we can simply write it underneath draw. So I'm going to type in update. So after each layer, we can update uh, the list. So the first statement I want to say is if Z is greater than or equal to AS, we want to return. So what this will do is it will uh, make sure that if Z passes on the array size, we won't uh, do the update because uh, there won't be any data to check. And then um, we start from the zeroth index and we have to move up. Uh, so to do that, uh, we are going to basically write a double loop. And the double loop uh, is going to be, basically you can copy these first two rows and close them. So since I'm going to increment Z, uh, we can use it as a parameter here. So first thing uh, at each uh, layer, um, I want to uh, basically check for the neighbor count. So I'm going to keep a, uh, create a parameter here called C and I want to get a neighbor count for C and I want to pass I, J and Z minus one. Uh, for this um, for this function. So the reason why I'm passing Z minus one is because I'm going to update it, update, uh, I'm going to call update, but I'm going to increment Z with one. So initially Z is zero, but then it's going to be one when I run update, because I'm going to be overwriting to the new layer, but I want to get the neighbor count from the layer below. That's why I'm decreasing um, Z here. And we have to write this function as well. So let's go ahead and write it. So I'm going to do int uh, get not neighbor count. So this is going to be similar to um, the two dimensional um, cellular automaton. And int k, we can also call this a z. Uh, it actually doesn't matter. So I'm going to first define int count equals zero. And then I want to write uh, for each location of each adjacent cell. So first one will be in CA. If in CA, uh, the first index is, we, we're going to look at the left. So I minus one plus AS and mod AS, right? So this space maintains that we don't um, exceed the array. And the second index will be J and the third index will be Z. And if this is true, then we would basically uh, do count plus plus so that we increment count. And you can call this as um, the left neighbor, right? So because we are only decreasing our X index by one. Um, then for the second one, you can simply copy this. So we can uh, do uh, basically J plus one and mod AS. And this will basically be um, the left top adjacent. So I'm doing something called Moore neighborhood. So you can look that up as well, Moore neighborhood. So for each cell, there are eight neighbors. And the last one would be left bottom, which is going to be J minus one and plus AS mod S, and that will be left bottom. And let's move on to the, uh, to the top. The top would be, um, we could say if CAI 
and then j plus one, right? So I can simply copy this row here and add this bracket here too. So j plus one mod as, this will be the top one. Then let's do the bottom which will be J minus one. So you can simply copy this in between and put it here. This will be the bottom. And we can also uh, copy these three layers and simply change this to I plus one mod AS. And these will be um, checking for the right neighbors, right? Instead of reft, this will be right. This will be right top. This will be right bottom, and each time we are checking for these neighbors. If they are, uh, if they are active, if, if this returns true, then we're going to increment count by one, and at the end we are going to return count. So this will give us the total active cells around the cell that we are checking. So let's go back to our update function. So this will give me um, a neighbor count uh, for the current cell. And I can also use it here. So if first we can check if the current cell is alive or not. So I comma J comma Z minus one. So there are two cases. It's either alive or not. Uh, sorry, this would be uh, in brackets. And this would be else, right? So this is basically if the current cell is alive or not. And I'm going to simply implement here um, some values. So if C is less than two, let's define some uh, condition here for the next one. So we want the next uh, cell, C, A, I, J, and Z to be, let's say, false, right? So now we are writing three-dimensional um, rules. And then I can do else if C is equal to two, then maybe we pass in true. And I have a few more, so we can also check if it's uh, equals to three, then it's true again. If, if it's equal to four, we can pass in uh, false. And last one uh, could be just else, right? So if uh, the neighbor count is more than four, we can also pass in false. And for the bottom one, uh, we can simply check first if uh, C is equal to, let's say if we have three alive neighbors, uh, then it becomes active and else it will become inactive so you can pass in as false so this will update um, the for the new layer right so every time I call this I need to increment Z by one and before we run out of the array size uh, we will go through the list of each row checking with the current Z value and uh, counting on the more neighborhoods. So checking for active neighbors, if it meets certain conditions, then we, we write for the next rows uh, value to be true or false. So that's, this is basically going to uh, create our cell automata layer by layer. And now the, to check for this, I'm going to write some key functions so that we can control how the script is run. So I'm going to do void key pressed. So the first thing I want to do is test if the update function is going to work. So I'm going to do if a key equals, um, let's make the first one a space. So this is a, um, an apostrophe and you put a space in between those two and then we want to do z equals uh, plus equals one we want to first increment z by one and then we want to call update right so we want to um, basically update the script so that we can accumulate layer by layer so that's what this should do so when i run the function 
the first thing it's it's called is reset so we're going to overlay the first layer with the z value being zero uh, then draw will be constantly running and uh, each time it's just going to show our, us the active, active boxes and the simulation box but every time i call update a new layer will be generated and uh, it will be visualized at the same time as well so let's run it and I'm going to hit space and you can see new layers are being added on top of the existing layers right so this is generated by looking at the layer below and I also want to check if our dimension is working so I'm going to decrease it to 2 and run it so now we can even work with a higher resolution and I'm pressing space a bunch of times so you can see that we are generating kind of a three-dimensional space uh, with this uh, script um, so let's add some more functionality basically um, I want to uh, add some uh, visualization options so like um, for instance we can start with adding lights to this uh, to this code so let's add some rights lights and I'm going to do directional light directional light and I want to pass in first a uh, red light you can also try other colors uh, this seemed to work when I did my uh, simulation so I wanna uh, so the first three parameters is the RGB and the second is the direction I'm going to add two more and the second one I'm going to change the color so let's make it 0 comma 200 comma 50 and I want to change this direction too so that they don't come from the same side and they highlight different edges of the boxes so that we can differentiate them a bit better and the third one is going to be 50 comma 50 comma 255 and this will be minus one minus one one I'm going to also add an ambient light you can also try different light com combinations to visualize it and last one is going to be a point light so I'm adding a lot of lights so that we can see the geometry a bit better so you can try different types of colors too and a location so now let's run the script so with these lights we should get um, a lot more colors so you can see every time I rotate to a different side I'm basically getting one side highlighted by one color and the other side highlighted by another color and you can see that I can differentiate between the edges as well so this will give you um, a way of uh, visualizing it I can also make the background black so that it doesn't interfere with the white uh, on top so let's try doing that let's change the background to 40 make it grayscale um, so I can't see the simulation box maybe we can switch it to being uh, white so let's actually go back to simulation box and make the stroke to be white so let's see now so now I have a white box in a black space and I can generate the simulation I'm also rotating the camera using mouse so you can pan with the roller holding the roller and you can hold the left mouse to rotate around the 3D dimensional geometry I'm going to stop this and uh, finally what I want to do is um, basically add some more parameters so what if we want to generate something in the middle um, rather than kind of a three-dimensional uh, blob so we can define kind of a parameter here let's call it res or you can call it r and um, for the reset let's say that we don't want to start at zero but we want to start at uh, res right so it's going to give me some sort of resolution and I want to offset it from the end as well so what this will do is if this number is uh, large we, we're going to have a small patch in the middle right you can also define it in another way like um, we can uh, start I from as divided by 2 minus uh, rest so that that will also give us kind of a more accurate 
um, placement. So if you do it like this, um, and then here you can do plus res, right? So that's uh, basically, this is the midpoint and you want to go uh, to the left this amount and we want to go to the right this amount and right now I have 40 cells so we can keep this at 10 so now let's run it uh, it's giving me an error so it's already jumping out of bounds because oh we did AS plus um, rest so I need to divide this by 2 and then add rest so you can see that this is kind of the resolution, right? I want a 10 by 10 grid offset to each side. And this will create something in the middle. I can also decrease it to five. So the, the first grid will be 10 by 10, basically. So this is a 10 by 10 grid inside the simulation box that has uh, 80 cubes in each direction. So this is kind of... Um, like not generating anything uh, substantial so uh, it would be nice to actually call reset anytime we are in this simulation so one way of doing that is adding another key function here so you can also say if key equals r so I'm checking for the key and then we can simply call reset let's add one more and this one is going to be uh, let's actually um, actually let's test first uh, let's test this one so I'm going to run this and let's run the simulation then if I hit R it's going to uh, go back right but the problem is when I hit reset Z stops at some value so I also need to reset Z so Z needs to be put back to zero So let's try now. So I can increment Z and simulate. And then when I hit R, I can go back with a new patch. So every time I do this, I can get a different type of configuration.